Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. So as you can guess, today we are going to talk about my favorite for the month of February. So for once I'm not too late, I guess, <laughs> hopefully. So um, for February, the month was, again, we had different type of weather. So I had some more fresh fragrances, uh, some fragrances that I like to, to wear to go to work and some uh, deeper, stronger fragrances, let's say, because it was also quite cold <laughs> in February. So let's start maybe with the fresher ones, with the, yes, the freshies or <laughs> the aromatic ones that I wore. So the first one, I don't know if I ever talked about this one, but this is a fragrance that I like to wear for spring and summer if it's not too hot. This is Widian, oh, so that's the brand. <laughs> this is New York by Widian. So this one yeah, is the is a really fresh fragrance, but what I really enjoy in that one, it has uh, many different aspects. I mean, it's really fresh in the opening, it's citrusy, it's really aromatic, but it's also floral and it's deeper in the background. So <laughs> it's, yeah, it's quite complex to describe in the sense that I feel like it's quite a complex fragrance. It has many notes also in it. Like I'm detecting like lavender, geranium, rose. Yeah, I feel like deeper notes behind also. Yeah, I'm wondering if it doesn't have pine or something like this. There is maybe a hint of mint. I don't know. I smell so many different things in this one. It's really complex to me. Really pleasing. Uh, I would say that traditionally um, it would be leaning maybe a little bit more masculine because it has these notes that you can, I guess, get a bit more in masculine fragrances. I feel like this is, I don't know, if... Memo and uh, Floraiku were trying to create their version of Le Frenchie by Guerlain, but with the deeper background. <laughs> this is more or less how I, I feel it, in the sense that it has this freshness, it has some lots of common notes to me. I feel like it has a common DNA with the Frenchie, but it's really deeper than it. But yeah, it's really beautiful. It has a moderate projection, I would say, but still a good projection the longevity is quite good also for this type of fragrance i mean it's not a super strong fragrance it's kind of, i don't know if i would say freshy aromatic <laughs> fragrance but it's also quite floral so it's hard for me to classify that one i feel like i have this with the widian fragrances it's kind of difficult for me to put them in a case <laughs> i mean but yeah, I know that London is maybe the most uh, famous one, but definitely this is the one I prefer. Yeah, I'm even wondering if it doesn't have something fruity also in it. I mean, you smell so many different things in this one, but it's still well blended. It's fresh, it's inviting, it's warm, it's aromatic, comforting at the same time. It's so many different things, but in the end it's working. So <laughs> uh, yes, so this is one that I like to wear from time to time. Not, I mean, not to go out. Usually this is something that I wear at home because yeah, as it's leaning a bit more masculine, I, I would say maybe sometimes it's disturbing a little bit for people that I'm wearing this, this type of fragrances. I don't know, but I, I love it. So yeah. Definitely, yeah, something that I recommend you, like if you're tired of <laughs> Bleu de Chanel, if you're tired of Sauvage or this kind of fragrances, you want something a bit better. <laughs> yeah, of course, the price is not the same, but yeah, I definitely recommend you to, to try uh, New York. My next one is another clean, fresh fragrance, I would say, and this is Te Yu Long by Armani Privé. So this is a fragrance I talked a lot, I guess, on my channel because this is like a real staple of mine. Uh, if I don't know what to wear, if I want something fresh to go out, if I want something to go to the office and not bother anyone around me, this is definitely the kind of fragrance I will be gravitating to. Like I love the opening, the fresh notes, the citruses are really beautiful uh, i mean i'm really difficult with citrus notes and i feel like in these ones they are really great yeah so i have citruses i have i have of course um beautiful tea 
note which is really comforting to me and it's really clean i mean tea um, is a note to me that it's bringing something comforting and clean at the same time and i just really enjoy it i know that I'm smelling it on paper now, but on my skin there is also iris, and on my uh, on my skin iris is uh, is much more emphasized than on paper. On paper, I barely get it, but on my skin definitely I get it more, which I really enjoy. I feel like it's bringing it something a bit more elegant <laughs> to the fragrance. So it's a clean, chic, elegant fragrance to me, and definitely something that are, that is really easy to wear for me, and I'm yeah, grabbing easily. <laughs> My next one also became quite an easy grabber for me. <laughs> so this is a fragrance that I love to wear for spring, or the let's say the whole year long, if it's not too hot or too cold. So this is Trouble Fête by Givenchy. Uh, definitely my favorite one from this collection. Uh, funnily, because I was not fond of fig, I would say, before getting this fragrance. And now that I'm wearing it more and more, I feel like I'm really enjoying it. So maybe this one made me like this note. I don't know. But the fig is really fruity. It has some sweetness in it. It's still green and leafy, but more fruity. I would say I get more the fruit than the leaves, even if it's... It has some greenness, of course, in it. And he, still it has some freshness, something clean in it. It's clean, fresh, elegant, fruity also. It's really interesting. I mean, I barely got this um, fragrance DNA anywhere else. So definitely one I would like to repurchase if I finish my bottle. But now they are really, really expensive, these bottles. I guess I bought mine when they just released this collection. And it was, okay, affordable, I would say. Not cheap, <laughs> but affordable for uh, a private collection. And now I, I think I saw the, the price online. It's like really crazy. So I know that's almost the same for all brands the, the price uh, yeah <laughs> the price really increased are uh, completely crazy now for me but okay so i will see but i feel like this bottle one day of course uh, i feel like i'm gonna finish it because this is really something i really enjoy to wear this is spring for me kind of spring in a bottle i mean green fruity uplifting um it has something comforting in it. I'm wondering if it doesn't have tea. I think it has sesame also. Ah, really beautiful. Uh, really enjoying this this two in the sense that, for sure, if I finish with these bottles, I, I would like to have another one. <laughs> okay, so after that, I have another fragrance that I really enjoy to wear at home, but also especially to go to work because I feel like this one would not bother anybody. <laughs> so and still, this is a Chanel fragrance. So this is number 19, Poudre. So this fragrance is quite new in my collection, but still you can see that I already <laughs> wore it a lot because this is a 100 ml bottle and I feel like, yes, I wore it a lot in February. Really, really enjoyed that one. I don't know why it took me so long to appreciate number 19. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> but at some point I smelled it and I thought, oh, I'm really, really enjoying it. I mean, I feel like my um, my taste for green fragrances has really evolved in the last uh, few years and I'm really more and more attracted by green fragrances. So what I really enjoy in this one is that, of course, it's green. <laughs> it has this nature smell, this almost sap smell that I really love. I guess it's because of the galbanum and it has iris, of course, so it's really also elegant to me. It's powdery, but it's so fresh and clean. I mean, yes, there is something fresh in the opening, maybe citrusy or... And it has this really clean, powdery feel to me. So it's really elegant, clean, fresh. I mean, you can't go wrong with this one. Um, I don't see how it could bother anyone, but also the thing is that the projection and the longevity is not that great, uh, especially the longevity. This is something that 
yeah, it's a bit sad. I would, I wish it could last longer. I don't know, but yeah, still, I don't mind reapplying it. But honestly, I think is is it eau de parfum? No, to me, it feels more like a um, cologne or eau de toilette. <laughs> I mean, it's not super long lasting. Maybe it was. Maybe they reformulated it. I really don't know because I didn't have it before. But still, I'm really enjoying the smell. So yeah, and I don't know. I had the feel that maybe or I was afraid that at some point uh, Chanel would again raise their prices or they would put that one in their private collection and the, 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 they will double the price of that one because yeah definitely I could see it also in their <laughs> private collection but yeah <laughs> this was one of my last purchases I guess and really really enjoyed that one uh, I think this will become a stable of mine for spring um, definitely loving it Okay, so my next one is also a Chanel and also a fragrance that I love to wear when I'm working. So, I don't know, I feel like Chanel fragrances really put me in the mood <laughs> for work. And this is 1932, so this is my work fragrance. I mean, definitely for me, this is the one I used to wear when I go to work. Uh, as you can see, I tend to go less to work now that we are all home working, but <laughs> still. So... Yeah, I love this typical Chanel aldehydes in that one. The iris for sure. I love this fruity note, so it has pear also in it. See, it's floral. It has something musky and clean also to it. Really elegant. Yeah, still really enjoying that one. I feel like it has this Chanel DNA. Really beautiful. Definitely stronger than number 19 uh, Poudre. But really beautiful it projects a bit more to me it lasts it's lasting also more on me uh, even if it used to be eau de toilette i guess <laughs> uh, i think i have the yes i think i have the eau de parfum version this is not one that i bought when it was still eau de toilette i don't know if it's different but still really really beautiful yeah <laughs> another stable so i mean this is one I will for sure keep also in my collection. Uh, my next one is a Guerlain, and this is a beautiful Neroli fragrance that I tend to be um, craving for when spring is coming. <laughs> and this is Neroli Outre Noir. So I feel like maybe I wore it also this winter because it, it's so sparkling and bright. I mean... It's just putting me in a good mood. This beautiful citrus with the neroli. I think I feel like it's so uplifting to me and also really elegant. Something that I love to wear when I'm going out. So as you can see, this bottle is going down. And yeah, so again, another one for sure that I would repurchase um, if I finish my bottle. I think that they have these 50 ml bottles now which is okay, uh, smaller, but still cheaper. And, you know, I, I tend to prefer to have smaller bottles if I can, because I have lots of fragrances, so for sure, if I can rebuy uh, 50 ml after that one, I, I would do. So, yeah, so this one is a beautiful narrowly with lovely citrus is really realistic. The narrowly is not um, super clean it has for sure it's clean but it doesn't have this soapy clean cologne vibe old-fashioned vintage you know <laughs> this is a problem that i have with narrowly sometimes it's leaning in this vintage cologne vibe to me this is the problem i had with the narrowly plein sud for example and this is not something i'm really enjoying but here i feel like this narrowly is really modern uplifting fruity really beautiful i mean it's shining it's sparkling it's bright it's ah, beautiful working really well with this tea note also which is bringing also something clean and uplifting and comforting to the fragrance and it's it has also something warmer behind which makes it so so beautiful it doesn't go into the clean musk narrowly fragrance territory at all and i'm really enjoying that i feel like phew, this is one of my favorite are la matière if i think it may be my favorite one now it used to be another one that i will talk about because i wrote i wrote it also in february but i'm feeling now 
Neo Lutre Noir definitely became my, my favorite one from the collection. Okay, so you can guess that my next one is also from the same collection, and this is the first fragrance I bought from L'Art et la Matière, and this is Joyeuse Tubéreuse. So another one which is really a happy fragrance to me, I would say, yes, the name indeed is well, <laughs> well found, because yeah, Joyeuse means uh, happy. So yeah, it's green, it's fresh, it's... It's floral, it has this warm base, it's really elegant, uplifting to me. I love the green notes in that one. <sighs> this opening is like to die for for me. If you love green fragrances, like me with this uh, white florals and vanilla in the base, I mean, you have to try that one. It's like, uh, or if you the kind of, you used to love uh, Dior Addict, for example, this is like the more qualitative or elevated version of it, I, I feel like, uh, yeah. I, I'm also really enjoying Dior Addict, and this is a fragrance that I still have, I still wear. But I mean, for me, oh, Joyous Tuberous, and when I'm wearing that one, I'm feeling so, I don't know, it's putting me in the really happy mood and uplifting, and so I feel elegant also, I really feel... Well, I mean, there are some fragrances, so I, I feel like it's the purpose also of fragrances to to, <laughs> to make you feel like, a, I don't know, when you're really in the mood or feeling even better, I don't know. But to me, this this com these uh, fragrances that I, yeah, that I wore, I mean, they are fresh, really uplifting, and this was definitely what I was longing for this month, because spring is coming, and this is the type of fragrances I'm really longing for. Like, um, okay, winter now is almost over. I'm getting a bit tired of stronger fragrances, so I feel like um, you can definitely tell. <laughs> But still, I have some uh, stronger fragrances that I wore also this month. Okay, so let's talk about the stronger ones that I wore this month. So the first one is a fragrance by Eta Libre d'Orange, and this is Soul of My Soul. So another beautiful iris fragrance that I really enjoy, but it's not only iris. I mean... To me, in the opening, the star of the show is the pink pepper. So if you love pink pepper, <laughs> I mean, this is a note that I really enjoy because it's bringing a kick, really something sparkling to the fragrances. And I feel like I really have that. This pink pepper is almost soapy to me, mixed with the rose, you know. It's, it's giving me an, an impression of a soapy rose with iris and something like thread musky thread <laughs> to it. Yeah, in the sense that almost like Cuir Beluga without this opening, which is a bit special. <laughs> I mean, Cuir Beluga, yes, is kind of special. I'm wondering if it doesn't have Mandarin Orange or um, Immortal in the opening, which is not the case here, but I have this feeling more from this the, the thread. The thread aspect, the, the this musky thread feel I have it definitely in this one with on top something like a soapy rose uh, with this soapy impression from the, the, the pink pepper. So really beautiful, um, really enjoying this one, really uplifting to me, uh, something that puts me in the mood also for work, but uh, let's say a stronger one or a stronger fragrance that is working also in colder months. My next one is a fragrance by Dior and this is Santal Noir. So this is a fragrance that I I really enjoy to wear at the beginning of the year. This is something, I don't know, I always go back to like in January or in February. So this fragrance has, let's say, something like a Middle Eastern DNA, like a Western brand trying to make Middle Eastern fragrances, something like that. But still, it has something really unique in the sense that the way it's executed to me it's really executed to perfection like everything is really i don't know the the blend is like to the really precise i want to say it has something really precise in the execution that i really enjoy everything is well balanced i mean yeah to me the blend is perfect so what i have from this one of course you have sandalwood but i have something like a rose sandalwood fragrance so which 
may seem not unique at all. I mean, there are tons of uh, <laughs> rose, musky, woody fragrances out there. But there is something in this one that is unique to me. Maybe in the quality of it, I don't know. It has something fruity also to me, definitely in the opening. I smell something fruity, so I don't know if it's something like red fruits or fig. It has something fruity, <laughs> definitely. So after that, for sure, I have this rose. I have something almost a bit smoky to it. Woody, for sure. So I have sandalwood um, and I have something musky, but not like clean white musk, but definitely something sm uh, musky to it. So maybe more like um, a vegetal musk, like ambrette, something like that. Yes, and the blend of all of this is really an elegant rose woody fragrance. A bit fruity, so it's not too dark, but it has some darkness, I mean, from the woody notes. It's really an elegant fragrance to me. This is something that I don't see myself wearing with a white t-shirt and an old pair of jeans. I mean, <laughs> and this is definitely unisex to me. I'd love to smell this one on men or women. I mean, definitely unisex. Beautiful fragrance. I hope they won't discontinue this one. I mean, I hope that it will last forever because it's and not reformulated. Sorry, uh, Francisco Jean, but <laughs> stop touching to my lovely fragrances. <laughs> the ones that I love from the machine. I mean, yes, I really enjoy the new look. So I have not uh, dare to smell the new one, but uh, okay. <laughs> it's really sad for me that this one was reformulated because I really enjoyed it. So please don't touch Santal Noir <laughs> because I'm really enjoying that one. To me, it's one of their, their best, even if it's... It's not groundbreaking in the sense that it's... If you just read the notes, I guess it's bringing nothing new to the table, but the quality of it, the... the 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 execution of the fragrance, I mean the way it's the way it's blended, it's just perfect. I mean in that way it's unique and perfect. So please don't touch it. <laughs> let me this let me wear this beautiful fragrance for a long time still and uh, yes, I'll be happy with it. Okay, so my next fragrance is a really comforting fragrance to me. This is something that I love to wear when it's raining, for example, outside and I had many occasions okay to wear it this month because in February it was like um cold and raining a lot. I mean we had only 20 hours of sun. This is what I heard in the north of France in for the month of February, which is not a lot. Okay, you can uh, you can agree. <laughs> so so when it was super cold and raining and uh, I needed something to comfort me, I wore uh, La Rhapsody Noir by Ducita. So I just have this small bottle that I got when the fragrance was released and. I'm still really enjoying it. I mean, this one is even better when it's raining. Hopefully today it's not. <laughs> but I feel like it's shining even more when it's colder and when it's raining outside. So this one is a lavender coffee fragrance. To me, uh, it's really reminding me of uh, Coffee Break by Maison Margiela. But I mean like a more elevated version in a sense that it's less sweet. I have definitely less sweetness. Uh, for me, coffee break is like uh, coffee with sugar, and this one is maybe coffee without the sugar, with a bit, with a little bit of cream <laughs> with it and vanilla. So, uh, yes, really beautiful. I love the tonka also in this one. I feel like the tonka in this fragrance is really bringing something more in the sense that I have some hay facets from it. I have something tobacco-y from from it. So it's going a little bit more in the masculine territory also, but still completely unisex. I mean, I'm, I really enjoyed that one. Really well blended, well executed by um, Pissarra. So beautiful fragrance that I enjoyed again this month. So hello again. Unfortunately, I didn't have battery anymore and I couldn't uh, film for a few days. So I'm back a few days later. Uh, okay, so I wanted to talk about the last fragrance, which is a fragrance that I bought recently, I guess, I don't know, I think it was the month of February. 
And this was the last release of Francesca Bianchi, which is Love for Sale. So that was a blind buy because she released, I think it's uh, once per year lately, I don't know. <laughs> it's been this last year, this last two years, she's been releasing a special edition. And this was the special one for this year. And I think this one, usually it's inspired by one of her existing fragrance. And I think this year, this fragrance was inspired by uh, The Lover's Tale. So I didn't remember what The Lover's Tale <laughs> was smelling like. I smelled it again. And after, <laughs> after I ordered the, my bottle and I was a bit scared because The Lover's Tale is a very potent <laughs> fragrance. Uh, very leathery and but I really enjoyed the dry down of it I found it really addictive I love the Okmos in it which was super sensual I really love that so I didn't really know what to expect and in the end I received this one so which is definitely sweeter than the lover's tail so what I have from it is sweet uh, violet so especially in the dry down in the opening it's a bit more fresh and clean and fruity i would say but you can smell definitely the leather <laughs> still in the opening you already get the leather and yes i love that in the evolution so this fragrance i still have my paper from a few days ago and <laughs> <laughs> it's still smelling it, so it's still, yeah, it's it's very strong and long-lasting her fragrances. That's that's crazy, but so what I have in the dry down is more um, fruity violets with leather, which is something that I enjoy. But still, the leather in this one is quite potent. Be careful if you don't like leather. I would say get away <laughs> from this one because. Yeah, the, the leather still in this one is quite strong and I would say it's quite animalic, you know, because sometimes leather can be still like soft leather, suede or something like that. For me, this one is quite animalic in the sense that I have the same base that in the lover's tail, but it's hopefully it's less strong because in the lover's tail, what put me off a bit was the, the leather note, which was <laughs> almost like goat leather to me. You know, I don't know why I had this uh, feel of uh, smelling a <laughs> goat, <laughs> but okay. And yeah, this this fragrance is really animalic. Love for Sale is a bit animalic, but hopefully mixed with the the violet, the fruity notes, and the sweetness, it's it's really beautiful. So still a statement <laughs> as all her uh, fragrances. This is a fragrance I already wear, um, yes, I wore for the months of February. And honestly, the <laughs> I sprayed it on my clothes and um, you could smell this fragrance on my clothes for weeks. <laughs> I mean, if you put that on the, on a scarf or on your coat, I mean, for the whole season, it's, go <laughs> it's gonna smell like, a, like the fragrance, but yeah very beautiful fragrance another statement from uh, Francesca Bianchi so tell me also if you've tried this one what you think about it okay so now let's talk about my discoveries of the month so I ordered some samples from uh, Sommelier du Parfum I guess you heard about them uh, this is a website where you can um, select fragrances based on your taste so you have um, somewhere where you, where you can put all the fragrances that you love and that you have and it's, um, let's say, calculating <laughs> your fragrance profile and then you have some suggestion but you can also select some specific samples that you want to try. This is what I did because uh, in my case, yes, I wanted to um, to try new fragrances that I didn't know. So this is what I did and usually they put um, five so your five samples and they, you have also a suggestion. So this is a free sample that you have with it. So yeah, so this is not some sponsored in any way, you know, they don't even know that I exist. <laughs> I just ordered my, my samples as any customer, but still I have a five euro discount uh, coupon code that you, I will put in the description box if you're interested. So this is an affiliated link. So if you use it, you get five euro on your order and I get five euro on my next order too. So 
I just put it if you want to use it. It's no obligation. I, I don't care. It's just for you if you want to pay it less. But voilà. <laughs> uh, the first one that I ordered is the new fragrance by uh, BDK, I guess. Ah, no, it's not this one. Sorry. So, <laughs> no, that's the new fragrance by L'Orchestre Parfum. So, this one is called uh, Mono Cashmere. So I had no clue that they were releasing a brand new fragrance, but I'm really happy because I, I enjoyed the brand and what they did. So let me spray it. Okay, so Mono Cashmere is really fresh in the opening. It's quite soft. It's not a very strong potent fragrance. It's quite fresh and clean. So yeah, I think this is the one with Iris. So this is the Iris fragrance. I'm not sure they had an Iris before. And this one is more in the clean, uh, chic vibe of, I would say, maybe Dior Homme or without the vetiver, but I don't know, I have some something in this <laughs> vibe, I don't know, in this trend. You, it's musky, but not super white, clean musk, so maybe it's vegetal musk here also, because, you know, white musk is not something that I like, but I know that I like <laughs> vegetal musk, like ambrette or, yeah, and... It's a little bit fruity. It's reminding me a little bit of 1932. I don't know if it's... It has some similar notes in a less fruity, less Chanel-like version, I don't know, <laughs> of 1932. But still, I don't know. It has something in the base that it's bothering me a little bit, like something synthetic or... I don't know, something that you get in many fragrances lately, which is making it more modern but less to my liking but still this is one that i enjoyed the next one ah yes <laughs> this is the new fragrance by bdk so this is vanille leather so i'm not sure this is really their last uh, release i think they released in the meantime another one which is uh i don't remember like an address or faubourg something but i didn't have the opportunity to to try this one before so Yes, this one I like, <laughs> which is rare in BDK fragrances. I don't know why, but this is quite uh, modern. Again, uh, leather vanilla fragrance. I think the vanilla is really likable. I mean, this is the type of vanilla that lots of people would like. It's not very aromatic. It's quite creamy and, and it has some sweetness. The leather, I feel like it's a bit uh, incense-y. I'm getting something maybe like uh, more benzoin than vanilla. It's balmy. It's like a ball, but I feel like it's something I already smelled before. I don't feel like it's reminding me of other fragrances. Nothing uh, that is popping to my head uh, quickly now, but I don't know. It's reminding me of something I smelled before. So nothing new. It's nice, but well, <laughs> it didn't wow me. My next one is also a uh, leather fragrance, but this is by Atelier Materi. So this is a brand that I tend to really, yeah, I really enjoy their fragrances usually. And this one I really like, but also it's reminding me of something. What is it? I feel like I smelled that before also, but it's a very beautiful leather. Is it a, I don't know. I can't really pinpoint it. I feel like I smelled that before. So the leather is much more enjoyable for me in this one. I feel like it's, I don't know, like a violet leaf based leather, you know? I, I really love the, the leathery feel from violet leaves and I get it from here, but, but it's deeper than that. It's not like a velvet feel from the violet leaves. It's, it's more than that. It's, smoky almost um, um how do you say boulot in english but i have this feel uh, on top of the violet leaves okay if i can find the word i will put it but <laughs> yeah beautiful one if you love uh leather fragrances and violet leaves <laughs> i feel like you're going to enjoy that one i have rose from it i'm I'm feeling like a hint of geranium. So is it the geranium from the rose or is it geranium on top? But I have geranium here with the leather. Something almost tobacco-y in the base, like tobacco leaves, but really dry tobacco leaves. 
yeah, it's pretty. Maybe leaning a bit more masculine, I would say, with the tobacco and the geranium, but really beautiful also. My next one is the last fragrance by Olfactive Studio, which is a brand that I really enjoy also. And this is Smoky Soul. So this one, I don't know, by the name, I was expecting woody, smoky fragrance with the maybe gayak wood or, I don't know, incense, something like that. And this is not at all <laughs> what I get. It's really fresh and uplifting. I, re I was really surprised. Like, I feel like, it's, yeah, it's really fresh. I get tea from it, like maybe a smoked tea, a black tea. Yeah, definitely. I feel like I get this feeling from when I get, I'm, yeah, I'm making my uh, black tea in the morning. So I definitely get this with a hint of, uh, of citrus also with it. So it's reminding me of one of the tea I drink in the morning. Oh, very beautiful. I I'm really enjoying it. I mean, tea is a note that I enjoy. I'm a tea drinker. So <laughs> of course, I'm really enjoying this one. It's a bit fruity also. Hmm, I like that. Yeah, almost apricoty or does it have jasmine or osmanthus? There is a little hint of something apricoty that's reminding me of what I get in uh, Neroli Outre Noir without it smelling like Neroli Outre Noir, but I don't know. I feel like the tea with this apricot vibe is a bit similar to it without this bright Neroli on top. I'm bit it's a bit, yeah, it's darker. It's maybe a bit smokier than, than Neroli Outre Noir, but I don't know. There is something in it <laughs> that's reminding me of it. But it's hard to imagine uh, Neroli Outre Noir without the Neroli. But if you can, <laughs> maybe you will see what I'm, yes, what I'm explaining here. Yeah, really one that I enjoy. It has something fresh, a bit earthy almost. Is it leafy or earthy? Ah, oh, it's, I, I like the base too, so. Yeah, re really enjoying this one also. Uh, maybe leaning a little bit more masculine, but I, I would definitely see myself wearing this one. So I guess this is the one I enjoyed the most from the ones uh, I tried. A really nice surprise. And the last one that I tried, completely different from the other one, but I never had the occasion to try it before, is Bake by Acro. So I already tried a few fragrances from this brand. I found them nice, but not to the point to, to buy them. And I heard about this one. Everyone was, I don't know, raving about this one. So I thought, okay, maybe I need to try it. And <sighs> Yeah, I really enjoyed the citrus on top. I mean, the, the lemon is beautiful, but yeah, it, it's a very sweet fragrance. It's a gourmand fragrance, smelling almost like a lemon pie or something like this. It has a lot of sweetness, but I don't know, somehow it's reminding me of fragrances I already have. So it's reminding me of, um, I don't know if, a mix between, um, yes, Lyra and maybe uh, this lemon fragrance by Olfactive, um, Laboratorio Olfativo. So I feel like it's kind of a mix between these two, lemon and Lyra. So yeah, it's nice, it's pretty, but it's quite sweet and creamy. So I think what's bothering me here is the creamy note because this is not really something that I enjoy. I mean, cream is like milk, something that I, I don't know, the smell of it is not something that is uh, I'm attracted to, but still I find it really savory. I mean, it makes my mouth water. <laughs> this is something that is quite realistic. Now I want to eat dessert or lemon pie, but if you love this kind of fragrances, I mean, you need to try this one because yeah, I'm sure you would enjoy it. And yeah, it's quite close to also, what is the other dupe for Lyra? I don't remember, but okay. If I find the name, I will put it on screen. So it, it reminds me of these two fragrances for sure. But if you already have them, I think like it's unnecessary to, to add this one to your collection. Okay, so that's it for my discovery of the month and the fragrances that I wore this month. 
Tell me what you've been wearing, what you've been enjoying lately, and I hope to see you soon in my next video. Bye!